Once we start a new project, one of the first things that we'll do is to set up the story settings. In Archicad, we're building a 3D model that's an infinitely large digital universe. And unlike, say for instance, AutoCAD, if you're experienced with that, it's not just a single story. We can break this up into multiple stories. So it's not just one view, it's multiple stacked views. The way we describe that here is the stories. We can go to our story settings, and I'll just give you some examples of what we will start by doing. I'll always insert above, never insert below, because I don't want to have negative stories. I always want to start at zero and go up from here. Normally, I'll just create a number of stories and then start to edit their height, elevation, height to next, and name. I will nearly always start also with the bottom story being something like AHD. Now, this stands for Australian Height Datum. Of course, if you're not working in Australia, that might be Datum. The next story above that will normally be my terrain story. Now this is referring to the, the mesh tool in Archicad and this is where we're going to build our site or we could call it our foundations, the earth on which the building stands. So I'll call it terrain or we could call it foundations. So I'm using some different words than previous, but that's just to hopefully clarify uh, that the words themselves aren't really meaningful. They're just identification for us to understand what we're talking about. Now, depending on the project, these names will change. A lot of the time I'm working on sites that are, are sloped, and if they're sloped, they may have a basement story, they may have a lower ground story and an upper ground story. So we could add a few different things in here. We could have multiple basements if we're working with a commercial building. Now we're looking at Aurora Place. We're going to be modeling up Renzo Piano's building Aurora Place in Sydney. And there will be basements, but we don't want to model the entire building. That's not what we're trying to achieve in this instance. So what we'll add just for now is a subfloor. We could call this basement, but Again, that's not what we're trying to achieve. And we'll have a ground floor, or we'll rename this, in this case, lobby. Just as identification. And then, of course, we will have a lot of tower stories. But again, we're not trying to model the entire tower. So let's just add a mid-rise and a high-rise. As this represents all of the different types of levels that we have in this building. Now I don't want to get too much into the heights of these. We we could guess for now. Um, I will do that to begin with, but then later on what we'll be doing is adding in our true values of what we're trying to represent. So I'll always have the datum starting at zero, and that's what we see here. Now I'll generally also have the datum height to next as zero. Now when I'm changing these, I'll start at the bottom and I'll be changing the height to next. And as I change the height to next, that will automatically adjust the elevation. These settings tend to be a little bit tricky in that if you do it in the wrong order, they just keep reverting back to what you had or they're changing the wrong side there. So they're going up or they're going down. So we need to make sure that we're consistent and I recommend using the height to next value in order to describe this. Now our foundation means that that's now at zero, or terrain, and when we add height to next, what we're saying is what is the height of the subfloor in this instance? Now generally what this means is what is the Australian height datum, or RL, to our building? How high is it above sea level? So let's start by making this 30 metres, and then we can adjust this as necessary later. The next one I'll make 3 metres from our subfloor to our lobby and we can change that later. In a residential situation, 3 metres floor to floor is, is a good type of number. Once we're talking about commercial, that tends to be a lot higher. Uh, but if it is a basement type of level, then we, we tend to keep that more minimal anyway. So that, might, that may be true. It may be more, but we'll look at that a bit later. Now a lobby tends to be a much higher ceiling space. So let's change this currently to 6 metres 
and then we'll look at these each as 4 meters height to next, height to next. Now I could add a insert above here roof, but it's not very essential for what we're trying to achieve. This is what we want. So we've got our names, the numbers are automatically assigned, but as you can see we're still starting with our bottom at zero. We don't want to have any negative numbers here. The elevations are defined by our height to next, and this final column is saying, do we want to see height levels? And what this means is when we're in our sections or our elevations, it'll automatically provide some levels on the side of the page. Now I can turn these off in other views. So for now I'll keep these. When I go into my sections and elevations, that will automatic, automatically produce those levels and I can choose to keep those or I can turn those off and, and I'll show you how to adjust that. For now we'll press OK. So we have our story settings. Now generally it will place us on the story in which we just set. So that places us up on our roof, which we don't necessarily want to be. Now the next thing that we're going to be doing in the next video is importing a drawing to understand the scale. Now we've got two options with that. We can import it as a datum onto the datum story, or we can import it as a worksheet. Generally I'll do both. I'll have something imported on the datum story, and then I'll import maybe some other options of things onto a worksheet. And we can talk in the next video about why we do that.